Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's the email in the description below where you can inquire about the price of this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Reach out to me directly for pricing, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we are discussing an all-time great, the first series production, Ulysse Nardin Freak, with a true tourbillon. This is the new for 2010 Ulysse Nardin Freak Diavolo. 45 millimeters in white golds. The devil made me do it, and this watch makes me want to put it on my wrist. Big and bold, but not thick at 12.9 millimeters thick. It's surprisingly slender, about the same as a Rolex sub. You can see from lug to lug, though, it's a beefy boy, 54.6 millimeters with a 22 millimeter spacing between the lugs. So this watch on the wrist is full-sized. I wouldn't recommend it for a wrist smaller than mine. At 45 millimeters, you get a sense of its size, but it's the distance across the wrist. It's, it's that 54.6 millimeters that leads me to say that if your wrist is smaller than 16 centimeters circumference, you should probably look for the original Freak, which was a 42 and a half. Now this timepiece right here is substantial, but it's surprisingly cuff friendly. You wouldn't expect, given all in that case, that it would slide underneath the cuff, but it actually will. So while the watch is sporty, you could, if you've got the panache, wear it as a dress timepiece. One more shot down the barrel. Let's take a look at the hardware and the software. The software, it should be said, is very substantial. Ulysse Norden is generous with the leather, which means it's thick cut, it's thickly bolstered, it's got a lot of volume, and it matches the curve of the case as well as the slope of the lug, so the look of the strap is integrated into the case band. As you can see, this is a Ulysse Norden factory strap in brand new condition. Black on the top, large rectangular scale alligator leather. It has a folded edge, a monotone stitch, and, and then again, there is some bolstering, so it matches the the volume of the lugs where it abuts the case. UN understands this is a large, heavy, and expensive watch, so the clasp is deployant, so it's harder to drop the watch when you take it off or you put it on. There's also a twin trigger release system, so it's not going to fly open if you do happen to yank your wrist back or recoil for some reason. It's not going to be pulled open by the inertia. The twin trigger release system ensures that. Now, the watch is remarkable. First, an interesting thing to see is that this watch is remarkably contoured, and I do mean incredibly contoured. There's a lot of nuance here. There's the knurling of the bezel, the knurling of the case back, two different knurling patterns, take note. There's a fluting of the lugs, which are nicely tapered. There is the decoupling system down at six o'clock that allows you to unlock the bezel setting mechanism. And then, of course, the bezel itself is one and the same as the setting mechanism. There are no crowns on a traditional freak. And you can see it does pay tribute to tradition, but distant tradition, with a set of fired screws fixing an individually engraved plate. That is the number of the watch in the series of Freak Diavolo models. And this is a reference to Lee Snorden marine chronometers of the 19th and early 20th century that would have had individual numbering plates. Now, in 2001, Lee Snorden creates the first Freak. The problem, the bezel setting system is just a little too loose. The solution a locking system that would allow you to unlock the bezel to set the watch. And that's exactly how it works to this day. It's not hard to read. The baguette movement, which is both the escapement and the drivetrain, uh, that is your minute hand. And there is an hour hand below. So you can see right now it is 2.30. Easy, intuitive. You just have to learn where to look. Now, this is also the first series production freak that included running seconds because it includes a flying tourbillon that acts as a seconds hand. It is a 60 second hand. Now, what's cool about this is that if you time just right, you can actually synchronize this watch now to the second against a reference time. But there is so much to discuss. Traditionally, the Freak was described as a tourbillon when in fact it really wasn't. It featured a minute hand that would make a circuit of the dial every hour. And while it did carry the escapement and the balance, it was what's called a carousel. A carousel designed by Dane Bonnebonnickson in the 1890s, was like a tourbillon in that it would rotate the escapement and the balance through several orientations with respect to gravity, but there was a different drive system for the escapement and the carousel. As a result, it was a little bit more durable. Well, Ulysse Norden here gives the watch a true tourbillon for the first time, and it's a flying tourbillon with no upper bridge to block your view. You still have the carousel, you still have the movement acting as the minute hand, but now you have a flying tourbillon beating away at 28,800 vibrations per hour that has a sapphire scale for you to read the time, and it's free sprung for durability and adjusted in six positions. UN makes its own silicon, and it has since it purchased Sigatech in 2006, so it doesn't rely on the Rolex swatch 
Patek Philippe silicon patents. It actually has its own internal supply, a feather in its cap. Note all of the sapphires here are just clear corundum. They are not synthetic rubies. It's a better color match tone-wise for what Ulysse Nardun is doing with technology. Now, the escapement here being silicon is low friction and unlubricated, which improves performance of the watch between services and extends the intervals between services. There's also a silicon hairspring, which is anti-magnetic. So this watch has all of the toys. Turn it over, lots to love. You still wind this watch with the case back. Uh, to wind the watch, you simply turn the case back and each full rotation of the case back is the equivalent of about 12 hours of power reserve. This watch, with caliber 208 has a power reserve that is between seven and eight days. And you can see how the coiling of the mainspring inside the case back acts as a sort of informal power reserve indicator. The longer you have the watch, uh, the better you become at gauging the remaining power by the tightness and the coil distance between the curves of the spring. This watch has it all. One of the most important timepieces of the modern era in its most Baroque and exhibitionist form, carousel and tourbillon, no crown, white gold, oversized, out of this world, and quite simply the most important watch Ulysse Norden has ever made. Reach out to Team Osso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.